Hello, mm -hmm. Bobby. Uh, welcome back. So, Janagiraman, I see some interesting stuff today, which is connected to your computer and so on. Yes. What so, is this? Uh, so, let me let me explain. So, you know, last lecture you remember, right? We were trying to analyze this particular correct, system. Correct, correct, correct. And this was the mic, and we tried to connect, you know, this voltmeter yeah. to the two. Uh, probes behind, right? But we couldn't make any. Yes, and why was because, that? Because uh, this was showing the DC machine. Exactly, we yeah. put it in the DC mode, and yeah. this was showing a DC output, and that was not useful to analyze a time varying waveform, right? So if you look at this, what we have now is V of t as a function of time. So it's a voltage. That's changing with respect to time. Yeah, so it is, you know, this microphone output is some weird well thing like this. Uh -huh. And if you sample it at a particular time instant t equal to t1, the amplitude is v of t1. Okay. But if you sample it elsewhere at t2, then the amplitude is v of t2. So if there is a way to see the actual signal here when we speak, Yes. It may look something like that. It may look something like that. Okay. So, what I have done now is I have ordered a separate standalone microphone here. Ah, okay. Right. And uh, that is similar to this mic. Yeah. Except that we have been able to connect it to our own breadboard and our own cables. And measure. And, and we are able to now, we can actually see those signals as we speak. And we'll analyze how the signal should look and stuff like that. So maybe you can just move this away because we don't need this yeah. anymore. Even Goodbye the to... <laughs> voltmeter is not useful in this experiment. Yes. So do you recognize what That's kind what of I a was microphone looking. that is? This looks like uh, some condenser type microphone. Yes. So the uh, specifications of this particular product also says it's a condenser microphone. I think it's a capacitive based, you know. Way of transduction. Yes, exactly. So. Uh, I think it's useful to define the, you know, the term called an electrical transducer here or an electrical sensor, which basically uh, somehow senses a physical signal that of the real world, right? The physical signals that we are like, for example, the voice or, you know, even your touch screen and stuff like that. There is some transducer that is translating that to an electrical signal, right? And microphone is one such transducer. Yeah. Right. So now I'll come back to your question, right? What are all these gadgets that's connected to my computer? Yeah. Now? So how do you look at, you know, you, you, you've done an electronics laboratory, right? So yeah. how would you have analyzed the time varying waveform that would have come out of this microphone? So I would have taken an oscilloscope, something where I can see the waveforms connected to this and uh, see there. Exactly. Right. So unfortunately, uh, an oscilloscope in the laboratory looks like this. Thanks to miniaturization of electronics, you know, that we discussed in the first few lectures, like how all the camera and the transistor and all that has been compressed into a small mobile phone. Exactly the same electronics miniaturization has enabled companies to sort of compress this oscilloscope and signal generator and a power supply. These are three bulky expensive instruments into a kit like this, right? So uh, this kit essentially, you know, has a lot of wires. I'll just focus on what wires have been connected to this microphone at this point, right? We are looking at the V plus, right? Which is basically going, uh, which is a supply, right? Then there's the ground, okay? And there is... 1 plus, which basically says the oscilloscope channel 1 of this device kit mm -hmm. is where we are connecting this microphone output to. Okay. So, uh, why do we need, you know, a power supply and all that? So, if you look at it, you have a, sort of a microphone like this, right? This is the diaphragm and we are, we are speaking here, right? And this particular kit, right, that we are talking about, this kit here has some more signal processing elements, okay. Let's not worry about that. 
So there is some uh, amplifier kind of thing which is processing this analog signal coming out of the microphone and it's going to give you a particular output now. Okay. So that's why you have to give a supply so that that amplifier will work. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to this. <clears throat> this uh, condenser microphone by itself may not generate a ah. voltage signal. Okay. So that's why you are giving the power supply to this. Okay, so you're saying that that's like a capacitor yeah. and only if you connect that across a supply, you will get some modulated yeah, current yeah, or yeah, voltage yeah. or whatever. Okay, so that's another reason why you need a supply even for a microphone. Okay, that's an interesting uh, fact, right? So now what we are going to do is we are going to simply, you know, connect this output of this kit through a USB. Okay, it goes to the, the thing, computer to the computer, right? And now what you see on this screen is, you know, you remember your oscilloscope where you saw a small screen and Correct. that was very expensive by the way. Yeah. Now you have such a large screen out here available. Okay. So we have already configured this oscilloscope to sample the signal. So whatever we are speaking now, you are actually seeing as a time varying waveform on this window here. Right. So, uh, you know, maybe why don't we do some experiments first? Sure, sure. Right? So, can you just speak into the microphone a little softly? Yes. Hello, Janagiraman. Yeah. So, what we observed was, you know, we saw a certain amplitude, right? So, you spoke softly and the waveform was, you know, by the way, this is the, this is the uh, V equal to zero, okay? You have to note that the signal is actually doing something about, let's go back here. So you look at the left hand side here, it is nearly 1.75 volt, 1.7, 1.75 volt. So there is a DC voltage on which the AC signal is fired. Exactly. Okay. So what is happening is there is a 1.75 volt and why is that? Because we have given a 3.5 supply and the amplifier just translates this to about VDD by 2. Okay. So, which is about 1.75 volt and then you see some time varying waveform, right? So, what happens is when you speak softly, we saw a certain amplitude, right? So, can you just speak softly again? Let's just... Hello. Hello. So, it went to about, you know, this peak went to about 2.7 volt. Okay. Now, loud. can you speak loudly? Hello, hello. Right. So clearly you saw this analog signal go all the way. Right. The peak this time 1.75 volt. It went all the way to about 3.7 volt. Okay. Right. So <laughs> that's a big hmm. jump. So when you speak loudly, you are causing more vibrations of air molecules. The diaphragm moves more and that has to translate to a larger electrical okay. signal, right? So the mic is doing exactly what it is supposed to. Now I want you to try something funny, uh -huh. right? Can you speak in a bass voice? You know, maybe like Amitabh Bachchan? That may be difficult. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but try your best, try, your, try, some, try some bass voice. Hello, how are you? Ha. So, so let's just try to you know, it may be difficult to see this, uh, but yeah. So what we did now, okay, this is a bass voice, okay, P of T. So let's go again. Can you say, can you try it again? Hello, how are you? Yeah. So what you saw was within 0 to 20 milliseconds, you saw a certain number of oscillations, right? Okay. So within 20 milliseconds, okay, 0 to 20 milliseconds, right? Maybe this is 0. You had certain wave, something like this, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, this is again at 1.75 volt. Okay, now I want you to speak in a female voice, okay? A high pitched, okay? high pitch voice and I want to see what we are going to get. Okay, let me try. 
okay yeah hello how are you yeah so if you observe the signal can you just do it again hello how are you yeah so first of all you went very close you spoke loudly so therefore the amplitude was high yeah but in the same 0 to 20 milliseconds what mm -hmm. we observe now is you have a much much you know a wave that oscillates so more number of cycles in in the same 20 time. millisecond window right so this is 20 milliseconds so in some sense the bass voice right corresponds to a lower frequency of oscillations right that's why you see in a same time window you see fewer oscillations whereas the high pitch voice has much higher frequency of oscillations you have more cycles like you said in the same 20 millisecond okay. window okay right okay. so uh, i don't know let's uh, maybe can you can you speak again and just let's see male or female ah good question <laughs> amita bachan <laughs> hello how are you okay so uh, yeah so now try the female hello how are you yeah so it's very evident that you know i was uh, so th there is one. It's visible. It is visible. There's one problem though. Hmm. This is an analog oscilloscope, right? Hmm. The signal is just being tracked and it just yeah. goes away. Yeah. Right? So you're not able to store and see anything. So we'll come to the digital scopes and all that stuff later, okay? Which will actually allow us to do some storage and analysis and all that. But that needs a lot more electronics, right? So we'll step by step get to that such points here, right? So effectively now. What we have seen is, you know, high, uh, high amplitude implies high energy, right? So, I, mean, I am giving more input, more output is also supported. Yes, okay. exactly, right? And you, and you also know that when you have to speak loudly, you need to, you need more energy to spend actually. Spend more energy. Yeah, you have to spend more energy to generate that signal right now similarly there is a you know a, a frequency dependent energy as for you know for the high pitch low pitch and all that but we will come to that in a at a later point in time right so what is now happening is if you just look at this signal like i said there is a 1.7 volt right so suppose this 1.7 volt was translated back to zero Mm -hmm. Right? Then does it mean that we are generating negative voltages? Mm, not like that. Yeah, exactly. Right? Mm. So when we speak, there is some positive voltage that is generated. The amplifier is actually translating that to, uh, you know, 1.75 volt DC. Yeah. Right? So if you look at this, there is um, the amplifier, the output of this particular system as a function of time this is your dc 1.75 volt and then you have you know oscillations about this right so in fact when you're dealing with such a signal right because this is the dc offset so how do you know this is the dc offset let's just say silent for one second And you see that the microphone is almost yes, zero. Yes. Now, we'll stay silent for another two seconds and just observe what happens. It's not a perfect straight line. Yeah. Right? Now, yeah. this is, of course, there is an AC running here. But even if you do this in a perfect soundproof room and all that, you can still see some wiggling because of analog noise. You know, analog signals are noisy in nature. They just pick up noise from your surroundings. Right. Okay. And therefore, you are going to see some oscillation, some noise around this DC voltage. <coughs> Sorry. So, effectively, if V of T, right, is your DC plus thing, it, you can write it as 1.75 volt plus some V naught of T. Now, this 1.75 volt is not very useful to us when yeah. we want to analyze. Because it's a constant which it's is a there constant, always. right? So typically what we need to analyze is only V naught of T. So it will be V of T minus the DC value, 
right? Now, with respect to this, this V0 of T therefore can have negative voltages and all that. So, physically, the negative voltage might not make too much sense, but in this case, when you subtract out the DC and all that, a negative voltage can indeed make a lot of sense. Yeah. Right? And there is information even in a negative voltage. Sure. So, uh, in the next uh, lecture, what we will do is we will specifically look at, you know, like I said, the high pitch, mm -hmm. right, corresponds to some sinusoidal with a high frequency and low pitch corresponds to some sinusoidal with a low frequency. But of course, the voice itself is not just a one sinusoid, right? It's a summation of many sinusoids of different frequencies and all that. But the fundamental signal that we need to analyze in electrical engineering is the sinusoidal signal, right? And uh, so, where have you come across sinusoids in general? Can you can you just list out some of them? Physically. Yeah. This uh, 50 hertz power supply. Exactly, that right? I see that is the sinusoid. first thing that we saw, right? Now, uh, the, and then uh, after that, maybe you can even think of simple harmonic motion. Right, yeah. the amplitude is going to be sinusoid. I mean, that's what we have seen in school, and of course, you also have waves. Yeah. Right. The moment you think of waves, you will have to think of a sinusoid. But in general, in electrical engineering, if you are able to analyze a sinusoid of a certain frequency and across different frequencies, you can analyze any signal. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the beauty of the sinusoidal sinusoid. and the power of the sinusoid. So next lecture, we are going to look at the origin of the sinusoid in electrical engineering in some cases and then we will get into specifics of the sinusoid as well. Super. Thank you.